Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm the Witch of Wonderlust here on YouTube and on Instagram, and today I have another interview for you. Like I said last week, this person is somebody that I have looked up to for quite some time now. I followed her on YouTube for a very long time. Same thing with Instagram. I have purchased many of her items and they have never failed me. Her oils are probably my favorite. They always pack a punch and always add that extra oomph if I ever need that in my spell. So I'm really excited to share with you this interview with Mama Sarah, the creator of Conjured Cardia. Sarah is the sole proprietor and operator of Conjured Cardia, which she created in 2008. She has worked nationwide as a spiritual practitioner, teacher, lecturer, and ordained reverend for 19 years, specializing in root work and earth magic traditions. She created Conjured Cardia as a balance to factory-based botanicas and a way to provide professional root work to the public. Through her websites, she has been able to provide services and education to clients in over 100 countries. Her focus is education and the purposeful creation of spiritual tools in order to help her clients obtain balanced and fulfilled lives. A quote from Mama Sarah, Root work is the utilization of specific altar setups, tools, nature, spirits, or deities, ingredients, formulas, and most importantly, offerings and prayers. These are all chosen using research, long-term dedication, experimentation, and tradition to record their effect on a specific goal. Just as we would participate in physical therapy after injuring the body, where we are guided by a professional on a schedule designed to rebuild and heal, Root work is the spiritual therapy designed to enhance one's life from a spiritual vantage point through daily prayers and spiritual exercises designed to focus the mind and spirit on a goal. We can manifest change and true fulfillment. So with all of that out of the way, grab yourself a drink, hang out with us for a little bit and let's meet Mama Sarah. Okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. Hello. Finally. Hi, how are you, honey? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Awesome. I'm really, I'm really excited to be interviewing you today. Oh, thanks. I appreciate you contacting me about it. I'm a big fan of yours, so I love watching your. I was actually just like binge watching your YouTube channel. So no way. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny. I think I've been watching your YouTube channel and following you on Instagram for a little over a year now, maybe two years. Um, so yeah, I've, I've always really liked all the content and like the, the knowledge that you just give out for free. So I really appreciate that too. Thanks. Yeah. I, you know what, when I started doing it, I just sort of, um, I was just doing it because I wanted to do it. I didn't even think anything about, it wasn't until like much later, I've had my business for like 13 years now, but it wasn't until really the last couple of years where all of my friends that are like business coaches, they're like, you put out a lot of free content. They're like, you need to start probably like charging for some things or something. And I'm like, eh, no, because I, I just do it because I like to do it. So I never did it for like views or anything like that. Like I never kept track of anything like that, you know? So it just was sort of, I guess there was a big lack of, just, I see it just a lot of spell videos and that's great. Um, but there was a, I saw there was a big divide and a big like open space that was totally missing like theory and like technique and things like that to teach people. So um, that's more the approach that I wanted to take rather than like, here's how to win the lottery, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really refreshing because again, like you said, there is a lot of spell videos out there and it's cool and dandy to like know how to do a spell, but if you don't know how to do the spell, you know, right. like if you're like putting it together, that's cool. But if you're not sure like what you're doing while you're putting it together, that makes all the difference. And there's not really a, too much information on how to go about that. Yeah, I think it's also, it's kind of like the, you know, teach a man how to fish thing where if you, I can, you can give somebody one spell, but if you give them the basics, they can write all their own. They just have to interchange correspondences or the day of the week or whatever, if, that, if they use planetary hours or, so they just have to swap all that stuff out. And then it's like, for me, that's what's, that's what's so important to teach people is that you don't need, you know, to memorize the specific spell for this one thing because there's 
a million spells for one subject. So if you just learn the basic setup and technique, then then you can then you can you can do it for anything that you need it need it done for. So yeah, a hundred percent. And it's all about you know using what you've got at the time. And um, I think it's become a lot of like okay, so these are all the things that you need. And if you don't have them, you can go out and buy them from this person and this person and this person. And yeah. while that's cool to have that option you know, sometimes I'm doing a prosperity spell and I might not have the money to like go out and buy all of these things that I may not just have. Yes. Yeah, hence the need for the prosperity spell. <laughs> right, yeah. So I'm kind of, so they're like, here's this prosperity spell you need, this $10 oil, this $13 oil, this $14 candle, and you're like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love the um, like prosperity <laughs> this I mean it's funny but it's not because I understand what they're doing but I love when you see like a, a examples of for I think for like new witches this isn't a good thing when you see like an example of prosperity altar and it's like somebody and they've got like 20 hundred dollar bills on there and it's like I can just imagine like new witches going ah <laughs> like yeah I can't do that you know <laughs> so, <What? laughs> it's like, it's so I just up. I'm like like, I get the point of it, you know, you want to attract more of that, and you want that symbolism there, and I do things like that, too. Um, I just, I think there should be more than one representation of that type of work instead of just that, so, because I think that can be a little disheartening for people when they see that. I mean, it's kind of like when you're trying to get the motivation to, you know, like, go to the gym and get super muscular and then you're seeing these like people who are lifting their body weight with like nothing but one arm and you're like yeah you know like it's yeah like, yeah that's gold but that's kind of like I'm not even yeah. close to it's all, it's all totally spirit crushing <laughs> like, <laughs> it is yeah it really yeah. is <laughs> okay so uh I ask everybody this question because this is the biggest most common question that everybody asks each practitioner what what got you started to make you who you are and where you are today? Um, well, I think that was a couple of things, um, two very opposite things. I was, well, I guess not opposite, but um, I, I've always felt really inherently drawn, drawn to nature. Um, I always inherently sort of, I mean, as like seven, eight years old, like, sort of made spells up outside and picked things up and like knew what they were used for magically and that was always like and I was really connected to nature I spent a ton of time outside um it was just really really natural for me I lived on 13 acres so I had access to a lot of land wow. um, I was always interested in plants so I split my childhood between that 13 acres and then living with my grandparents in Florida. So I got to learn two very different regions and terrains and um, native botanicals. So um, even at a really young age, I can remember having herb books and using them to identify everything I could find on, on you know, that was around me. And um, yeah, so it was just a really, I, I just, I don't know, it's like I was born that way or something, you know, but um, I guess it's just part of my personality that I was just innately attracted to those things. Um, and I think the other part was, I had a very difficult childhood and I was, I was convinced I could change that with, I was convinced I could change that with my own power and my own thoughts. If I could find a way to sort of hone those and harness that energy and to learn to like protect myself and make a barrier against the things that were in my childhood, I just innately knew that was inside of me and I could figure out how to use that for my benefit. And, and I did. I think that I didn't suffer near as much as probably other children would have in my position if I wouldn't have had that feeling of some sort of like internal power that I, that I just knew I possessed and that I could, I could totally use it to transform my situation as soon as I was able to like 
start exerting my own force and making my own decisions. So as soon as I could do that, I was out of there, of course, because that's the best magic of all, <laughs> is leaving a shitty situation. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the best magic of all, is just having the strength and the power to go, you know what? I am so over this ass, like, <laughs> you know, and I'm out of here. So, um, so yeah, so two kind of weird, you know, opposing things, but like one really great and one not so great, but that's sort of what, that's, that's just what made me as a kid, so. So that, that just led you to strengthening that internal power within yourself and leading you to be the healer and the practitioner that you are today? Yeah, I think that, um, I think definitely having the draw to nature and like understanding the energy and the power in nature and how you could sort of use those as representative tools and focal points um, to sort of build even more um, power and, and like enhance your, the energy you're putting towards your goals. Um, I think it was just little by little kept progressing. And then I think I was, you know, probably 12 or 13 when I started going to like metaphysical stores and like buying um, like Scott Cunningham books and things like that. So I was, um, it was nothing I was ever like shy about or embarrassed about. And I, I didn't have anybody in my family make me feel that way. Um, so I was very lucky in that aspect. Um, I, I'm not going to say it was totally, I'm not going to say they didn't think I was nuts for like being into it as much as I was. Uh, they probably say, some of them probably still think that, but that's okay. Um, but I, I didn't have any, I didn't come from a very, um, strict organized religion background to where they were like, you can't do that. You're going to hell, you know? So, um, yeah just between my own interests and really just, I mean, it sounds cliche, but just sort of following my heart to the path that I really felt was natural and right for me. And it, it hasn't, I mean, it hasn't let me down so far. So, and I don't expect it to. That's good. What, what are the influences that you have in your practice now? Like what influence is that? Um, you mean like what are like my path? Like what um like what do I practice? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say I'm definitely probably the it's I mean it's a I guess it's not a broad term, but probably what I would just introduce myself as as a hoodoo practitioner. Um I do practice there are lots of um forms of folk magic that I think I sort of take a bit from here and there just because my background is so mixed up. So it's, so it's hard to like, um, you can't, there's too much to totally include everything, right. but you don't want to include anything either. So you just sort of are, you know, working these bits in as they feel natural. And um, yeah, I would say I'm a hoodoo practitioner and I would say I'm a devotee of Marie Laveau. Um, I am a practitioner of New Orleans Vodou. Um, yeah, I would keep it with, those are, those are still three pretty big things, but yeah, I would, I would keep it with that. It depends, which one I tell people depends on the person, so. Oh, I, yeah, I relate to that very much, so. The last one, I don't, unless people are pretty well versed in sort of different practices or traditions or like religions or at least like cultures open to different cultures i i don't even get into the last one because it's just it's like it's opening a can of worms and sometimes i'm just trying to like relax after work and i don't want to get into it with people <laughs> yeah well okay so now i'm curious what like what a work day looks like for you because you you don't have a very common workplace that most people would be able to understand even like what that even looks like from monday through friday yeah, yeah. So um, my my week is split between doing um, services for clients. Mm -hmm. So that is on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And then I do fill orders Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I do all of this out of my home. Um, I have an assistant who comes here to help me because um, there's I've had an assistant for about ten years now. I've had wow. a few over the years. 
but um, she's been with me for four years and there's, there's no way I can do it without an assistant now. So um, yeah, so it's, you know, normally a good, um, probably a good 10 hour day every day. It's a lot, it's, it's a lot of work. It's at least, it's at least that. I don't even want to get into counting like hours of emails <laughs> or anything like that. Um, yeah. Just because I'm trying really hard not to sell out at this point. Like I probably should with the amount of work I'm doing, but I'm real. I'm trying really hard to not sell the brand and not hire a bunch of people to do. I'm still making all of my own products. So they're all absolutely handmade by me, um, which is why it takes some time because it's a lot of care. Um, I, you know, I, in some, some days I think I would be thrilled to hire 10 people to just do it for me, you know, and then yeah. get everybody's orders out like Amazon prime and they'll get there in like, you know, 48 hours or something. But, um, yeah. but you know what? I just can't sell out. So <laughs> I just can't do it. That's the life of being your own boss, right? Of just like figuring yeah, out that yeah, there's, there's some great things about it, but it's also, there is, it is certainly, I think a lot of people think when you're working for yourself that you're, you have a lot of free time and there's hardly any it's free time. Opposite. <laughs> yeah. 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 If I want free time, I have to schedule it about a month in advance. So. Same here. Yeah. You have to make sure that you do like a month work within like two weeks in order to get whatever exactly. time off that you want. That's exactly you have to like right. double your workload. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, totally know where I'm coming from. Oh, I sure do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm curious. So you, I mean, I know that you make all of your own oils and such. I'm curious as to like what the process was like or is still like of making those oils. Because I know that, you know, like I could throw together an oil and I've done so before and I've like had a specific idea of what I think this oil is going to have an effect as. And it's like, not what it you know like it the actual effect that the oil has magically is very different or not exactly what I want so like what's the process of perfecting that um the effect that specific products that you create make well I think a lot of what I sell are very old recipes that I've taken a lot of time to research back as far as I possibly can to get the original ingredients and the original use for them. And they're, you know, common ones like Van Van oil and things like that, that probably everybody has their own way of executing that, you know? Um, there are some other ones, that's a super common one. There are some other ones that are more rare than that, that are still very old formulas. Um, the ones I develop on my own, I would say I end up Okay, it's going to sound crazy, but I'll, almost all of my recipes come to me in my dreams. Like, I'll wake up, oh, okay. and I'll have the recipe, and, like, what it's for, and I have the craziest, I don't even do drugs, but I have the craziest <laughs> dreams. Like, they're so vivid, it's like I'm, it's like I'm somewhere else, and it's like I can... I'm picking all the herbs for it and I'm like writing down the recipe and then I wake up and I keep books next to my bed and then I write it down as fast as I possibly can and I sort of think about it for a few days and like make sure that oh did I like try to go back to the dream did I get that right did I get that list right like try to remember what was around me was there something I picked I didn't write down and then I'll have it you know so maybe like a week I'll give it give it in the book to sort of marinate then I'll make it for myself and I'll use it myself for, I would say at least a good two to three months, or I will use it on really regular client workings. Like I have some that get work from me almost every week and I know their energy really well and like how it's gonna, whether or not it would be really, it would be conducive to their work. And if it would in, there's somebody that's like, it's like a, like a trusted guinea pig. You know, it's like, I know they're, they're like, not going to be, do it. I don't care. I they're not gonna be <laughs> upset with me for trying out a new oil. They're probably going to be super excited about it, actually. So, that's good. Um, Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then after, if I, and I, I keep very strict records, 
of sort of, you know, what's happened. I'll usually work on something about three times a week, like day on, day off, day on, day off. Um, or sometimes I'll do, you know, a couple hours a day. It just sort of depends on timing and like planetary what's going on. I keep really strict records of my results, um, how I'm feeling about how, how the, how I think the formula is, is working with things or influencing things. And then if I feel like that it's worthwhile, then I will go ahead and list it for the public to purchase. So sometimes they're kind of, you know, doesn't happen often, but once in a while I'm like, eh, I must have got, I must have remembered something wrong because that didn't work out, you know? But, yeah. um, but most of the time it is almost, it is almost like a divine download. Like I know that sounds insane, but it is most, all, almost all my work ideas come to me in my dreams. So. Wow. I like rarely ever dream. So when people say that they get those things from their dreams, I'm just like, I like, I remember dreaming, but I don't remember what I dreamt about, what it felt like. I was just like, I dreamt something, but I don't remember yeah. what it was. So like when people do these they work like that. Yeah. I, I know, I know a lot of people like that. And I'm wondering if that is, I don't know if, I feel like people are dreaming less. I don't, I don't have any facts on that or anything. I'm just, I'm just saying that. But I just, I really feel like a lot of people tell me that. I have a lot of people write me about wanting to dream more. I have a lot of friends tell me that they, they want to dream more, that they don't, you know, that they don't dream. And I'm like, man, if I could turn my dreams into movies, I would be a millionaire. Like, I, have, I have the best dreams. <laughs> I, well, okay. So what's interesting is I, wasn't much of a dreamer like there was like years that I didn't dream like I maybe once or twice but none of them were like renowned or whatever and recently I've been doing oh like way more ancestor work than I previously have and I've been like only in the past maybe few months or a year have I been dreaming like way more often they've been super yeah. vivid but like previous to that, I've just like never been a dreamer. So it's just been weird to have this like drastic shift almost literally overnight of just like. Yeah, it sounds like you definitely opened up some sort of some sort of connection there, some sort of gateway there. So I'm sure that that's going to I'm sure it's going to reveal itself to you and be really helpful for you. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, there's definitely a lot of like doors starting to like just barely I'm open yeah. so that'll be a really interesting journey to um see i yeah. so i like yeah. that you're i like that you like experiment with your oils and with your items i tend to do a lot of that as well um how do you keep your records because i'm awful at keeping them in like one place do you have like a system like you know like share the yeah, secrets of how you keep it i have i keep <laughs> i keep two planners I keep okay. one planner of all of my, and it's like time blocking throughout the day. I keep one for all of my clients, my client work and other things I need to like community services. I need to get done for, for work and everything. Then I have another planner that's strictly astrological stuff. Like, okay, what am I going to focus on today? It's the magic of eye planner. I'm sure you've seen I it, right? Love, I love that brand. They're amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I use, and then I use like two other sort of astrological books, like cross-reference them, write them in the, I'm sounding so neurotic right now, um, and then write them down in the, the, um, the, um, the magic, magic of eye planner, and then of course, I have like a real life planner on my computer that's like for, you have to go to the doctor, you know, stuff like yeah. that. But, um, <laughs> between the two of like keeping my client work straight what I'm doing for my clients what I've used and then the reason I do those things on that day is because of what I have recorded in the magic of eye planner that I've already cross-referenced with like two other astrological two or three other astrological sources so um but I'm a lot older than you, so it takes some time to develop this. So don't feel bad that like you don't have your shit together right now, like scheduling. It's like because... not even close to together. <laughs> it's like you'll, in you'll four different there. planners and like online and in my notes on my phone and like 
when I'm like, oh, I wrote this down somewhere, it's like half in one book and half on my phone, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, one thing I've noticed from your videos, because I was a note taker in college, I've been a note taker my entire life, I'm a post-it note person, so I am the same way, and I've noticed that you're a note taker, and that is half the battle. If you can write it down, you it's just getting a filing system. It's just getting yeah. like a, a, a planner that fits how your brain works and just getting it filed in there because that's half the battle because most people won't even write stuff down. So that's, that's like, true. yeah, you're probably, that's probably over half the battle. So if you're a good note taker, you're, you're ahead of the game. Trust me. That's good. I, I write everything down because I'm like so scatterbrained because I have like 20 things going on at the same well, time. But, you're, I mean, yeah. it's, you recognize that, but you're not that scatterbrained if you're taking the time to write it down and realize. You <laughs> That's good. So. It's just like randomly I'll like scribble it, you know, on a <laughs> post-it note and like my roommates are like, what, what, what does this mean? You're like, what, is, what does it mean to jar up the spiders? Like, Olivia, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm like that with my kids, like get around my papers and I'm like, don't touch that, don't throw that yeah. off. Like if you if you move out. anything, <laughs> if you move anything, everything is ruined. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, exactly. A, it's an organized <laughs> organized disaster for me. <laughs> oh yeah, time. Okay, so I know that so you do a lot of client work, you do a lot of readings. Um I I asked a previous interview of this and I thought it was an interesting question what are the do's and don'ts so if I'm your client either for spell work or a reading if you could be brutally honest like what are the do's and don'ts of like don't come in and ask me for a spell for this or like don't do this if you're taking spell work or do do this like I would just like to know what that well <laughs> I would say the first thing is is I'll sort of go down my because I I have a list of this stuff, trust me. And I've thought about making a video about it many, many times. Oh, but, well, here you go. <laughs> because, and all everybody tells me, my assistant tells me all the time, my other friends that are like kind of colleagues of mine tell me to do it because it's, we, it's like chronically the same problem with everybody. Um, the biggest one is not, and this is not, ever, this is not totally everybody's fault. Um, because there are a lot of scam artists out there, right? Especially right now. And I can tell you there's been a huge surge in that um, from when everybody, from COVID. I saw a whole, a whole thing of scammers open up because, I mean, because why? Because people are, they know people are at home and they're trying to make money, okay? I get it. I, I get it. I'm not going to fault anybody for um, everybody's taking advantage of somebody in some way, in my opinion. I'm not going to fault anybody for trying to make their coin. Like, that's not, it's not my business. I would prefer you not do it that way, but you know what? I'm not here to judge people because I don't, uh, I'm not perfect, okay? So, the big thing is, I would say, just if you, if you start to research for somebody like myself, you think maybe you want spiritual work done, See if they have a website, see if they have interviews you can go uh, listen to or read, see if they have a YouTube channel, um, check their social media pages, see if they're active, you know, see if it's sort of cohesive, it's the same person throughout them. And if it is, and it looks like a professional person, then treat us like a professional. Don't treat us like we're, you know, a circus sideshow. Don't, don't treat us like, you know, you're you're trying to get a deal out of us. This is a profession just like anything else. And if you wouldn't go, you know, it, it's like when booking an appointment and people think, oh, they're going to get in that same day. And it's like, well, with what professional in any career field do you get in that same day? You don't. Right. There's no such thing, okay? If a person's a professional, they have a client backlog and it's in their booked for you know, a week or two or three or four weeks at a time. I'm booked four weeks at a time all the time, sometimes five or six. Wow. And it's, if you're, and I'm not going to say this, I don't want to exclude um, younger folks who haven't been doing this as long as I have, because of course I have a client base built now. 
I've had 13 years in the public and I've had 20 years doing it total. So, but if you go to somebody and they can get you in that day for $20, it's probably a sign there that you get what you pay for, you know, and a deal is not always a deal. So, especially when it comes to spiritual work, you know, it's like you pay yeah. full price for haircuts, you pay full price for tattoos, you pay full price for your shoes. Well, you pay full price for spiritual work too. That's not something you want to discount on, you know, no. like bargain bin readings or spiritual work is not what bargain you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like, that's some heavy stuff that you're just handing somebody, like you're handing this person power over to make influence on your life. Like, I don't think I would spend $20 to do that, even if I didn't have a, a ton of money. Like that's, that's a sure. big decision. Yeah. Sometimes it's, and sometimes it's something you have to save up for because that's how life is. When you want to have make a big improvement to your life, sometimes you have to save up for it. And I and and I get that, you know. Um, the other thing would be that um, it's if w most of us have invested, I've probably invested tens of thousands of hours into my website at this point, and people routinely do not read things when they purchase them. So they're always like this constant flood of emails of people asking, well, when am I going to get booked? Well, do I get pictures of my service? Well, how long does the service last? And if you read the listing, I have spent tens of thousands of hours making sure all of that information is in there. So you, so you, because this is what I want, I want you to be a well-informed, educated investor in yourself. And you can't do that unless you have all the information as to how my procedure works. So that's why I make it available to the public and I'm very, very clear about it because I want you to know what you're investing in. It also sets me apart from people who are scammers. When I make it very clear and tell you my entire protocol of how it works, not just, hey, cash at me $200 and I'll right. do a spell for you. You know, there's a big difference between those two things. So. Those are, um, those are probably the main things. It's also, it, it's difficult to, people get very impatient and they get really like concerned about their spell work. And so like the constant flood of emails is, I've gotten much better at um, making time, like shutting off my messenger. I'm available from like eight in the morning until eight at night and that's it on the weekends it's not on i'm not available so i've actually like set business hours for myself that's only something i did really in the last couple of years before that you know if i went on vacation and i was getting you know messages at 11 o'clock at night i would answer them and it's never a simple message because nobody contacts me when they're in a great place they contact me when they're in a terrible place and they need somebody to talk to for an hour so it's not, you know, it's not going to be just a hi, bye, thanks. You know, it's going to be a long drawn out thing because that's what a consultation is and should be. Um, but I think that's the, thinking that we're like at constant disposal just because we work through the internet, just that we're, you know, at, at your whim at any time. And that's, that's not true. We have we have lives, we have children, we have homes to take care of. A lot of us have other jobs. This is my main job, but many people do this on the side when they're first getting started. Um, so it's really just treat us like human beings, you know? And, and that's, I think, that's a big problem with really any career where somebody is sort of based in the virtual world, is just really getting your time taken advantage of, so. Oh, 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's, I think it's just that time like is almost irrelevant when people are on the internet, you know, to them because it's just like that's what the apps do. They like to kind of suck the time away and keep us yeah. scrolling, keep us watching videos. And well, there's nothing wrong with that in in uh, in balance. It's just kind of like that doesn't help the creators, the people who the business. Um, people who are you know using those platforms it kind of makes us seem like we are part of the app rather than like people who are also using the app um yeah absolutely i'm sorry i have yeah. to just check out this candle for one second i just need oh, to make sure okay. i'm gonna like set myself on fire over here oh yeah don't maybe don't do that <laughs> we're good 
um okay so wow that's I don't I'm like oh, a, that was a lot. <laughs> no I applaud you I mean one of my friends is oh well not one but like a few of my friends are readers as well and they also do spell work and I I don't I can't comprehend having that much that much energy to be like consistently transferring to people that I don't know or even people that I do know and like how do you keep how do you not like become completely drained at the end of the day well I think that that um I think well I'll tell you one thing I I had my assistant um she's been my head reader now for the last four years I've totally given up all of my tarot I don't do any tarot readings I haven't for the last four years the only thing I will do is bone throwing readings and that's usually why I'm at an event is to do bone throwing readings and that's the only type of reading I do now so I only specialize in that. That was the first thing that I did to preserve some of my energy because it was, I could handle the workload but it would have probably, I've gotten close to burnout a few times because I do love my job and I love to work and I love my business and I love my brand. And I love social media and I love all the people I've met on it. So it's so easy to just keep going and keep doing and keep creating because I love it so much, you know, so I'm not complaining about that at all. I really do love it, but it can, anything, if you do it too much, whether you love it or not, is you will get tired of and you'll get burnout. So um, I think for me, it has come with, a lot of it has just come with age. I've been practicing so long that it's kind of like a muscle where you, when you use it so much and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and it's almost like muscle memory, you have more control and you just sort of automatically, you can automatically jump in that space, do what you have to do, and you can shut it off when you need to shut it off. It is, it is I, muscle memory is the closest thing I can compare it to because it's at this point after 20 years and having and having clients all those years it's just it's just it's like a muscle that you've just really um trained to do one specific thing and that's what you do every day over and over and over so in the beginning it was exhausting but you know the stronger i got the less the less, exa less exhausting it would be. You still have to take care of yourself. You can still strain the muscle. You can still pull the muscle. You can still injure yourself. Um, so you can't, you know, you can't be neglectful and you can't be careless. But I think it is just sheerly from just how long, anybody who does anything for 20 years, if you're not good at it after 20 years, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah. it's you know that's I guess that's just um yeah that's really the best comparison I can make is it's just it's like muscle training it's just um you know you have just trained trained your mind over and over and over to just how to get into that space and how to get out and I think another big thing is um while I I don't like using the term empath and I would certainly never use that for myself um there's obviously some connection there which is how i pick up on my clients and how to work and, and working with them and mm -hmm. how to help them manifest things but it's almost like a valve for me and you have to be able to turn that valve off really quickly when you know you're you can't feel too much of somebody else's energy you have it's just enough to where you understand the situation but not enough to where you're sobbing with them because sobbing with them doesn't take care of a problem. That doesn't solve right. anything. So I can't feel to the point to where we're both just blubbering messes. I have to shut off. I have to shut that off so I can be rational and reasonable to help you with your problem. Mm -hmm. But I, but but enough so I understood it. So that's yeah. another that that is another huge exercise that has to be that, that's got to be accomplished. So. Mm -hmm. You you use the term empath, and it just kind of gave me a, an interesting question of like what I mean. You've been doing this for so long. I'm just curious what you think and like how you perceive uh, spirituality, the occult, witchcraft on.
social media, like how how it's seen almost on a surface level. Like how do you what do you think of that? How do you feel? Well, you know what? I'm probably not gonna say what every I it's probably gonna surprise you what I'm gonna say because it's um I understand that people especially there's a lot of stuff recently going around with um, social media, witches and witchcraft that maybe looked a little crazy. I don't totally understand it. I try to stay, I, I try to stay off the internet, believe it or not. I work through the internet, but I really don't read, I really don't read the crap. So, um, but I honestly, I think it's great. If I, if there would have been this when I was your age, I would have thought it was fantastic. It, but it has, you have to have your own discerning mind to realize that, you know, these photos are set up to look this way for most people. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and that's not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with arranging things so that they're aesthetically pleasing to take a photograph. That's what Instagram is. It's people who like to photograph things. It's, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> Bless you. Um, I think there's a big difference between okay when you're looking at if you were going to look for a spiritual spiritual worker online um i would look for more of like a working or living altar versus just these sort of flat set up photos that you can sort of tell was just sort of like a one day thing if there's not a theme running through this social media of like a working live altar of that person that would tell me that okay this person is interested in this and they set this up for you know, one day a week or whatever, one day a month. So that sort of tells me it's a, like a gauge between between just maybe types of people. Not that one is better or anything. Just what you what you prefer to sink your attention into. But um, but overall, I don't think I think it's a great thing. A lot of it is great information. You just you know, if you're not. Maybe I guess if you're an easily influenced person, or maybe you have a hard time. Uh, I think it's great to I think it's great to look through it and look through the photos and get inspiration, and not really read too much of it. So <laughs> there yeah. are a few there are a few people I follow where I will read their posts, you being one of them, because they they really have something to say. But other than that, it's best to just take it as as inspiration and take it with a grain of salt. People take things way too seriously in life. And I would have been thrilled to have Instagram when I was 19 or 20 or 23. Um, and you just, you have to have a discerning mind about it. You can't believe everything that you see. That's just, that's life in general. That's just something everybody has to learn. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I think uh, I, I have friends who are both more new age practitioners and friends who are very traditional and grew up you know in pagan ways and occult ways and yeah. it's funny to see that contrast of like what some of them are like just are enraged of like how it's so mainstream and i'm i'm kind of like to be honest when i was younger and i was like trying to learn about all of these things there wasn't a ton of information and like now it's you know you can find like spiritual supplies or things that you can use for your craft like at Walgreens you know or like yeah. in such convenient places you don't have to seek out this botanica that like isn't on google maps or like that you know you can yes. only hear through the grapevine I think that's there's a lot of good things that come with it but just like anything else with so much media coverage you're gonna hear the bad things or you're gonna get a lot of misinformation as well so I think it's just that balance like you said of knowing to take everything with a grain of salt and like knowing where to stitch things together for yourself and form your yeah. own opinion. Well, I can say one of the best things that's come through um, social media is just um, the whole, you know, I, I know everybody says, oh, it's getting too popular, too mainstream and all that. But, you know, we have a group of people right now, marginalized people, the whole black girl magic thing. The whole uh, we have a we have a group of marginalized people that may not have had access to first of all forget any books on African spirituality forget any taking any courses maybe at your local college that anything on African spirituality so a lot of what you're getting this is a lot of where they're getting their inspiration and and what is this because we're talking about marginalized people who have had their original beliefs stripped from them. 
were were colonized, made to follow a a religion that was not theirs, and they're just starting to get back to what was originally theirs. And how they're doing that is all of is the information that's on the internet because this is not something you can just go to the bookstore and find. A lot of you know, there's not a lot of classes and courses and you know events being 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 you know about this subject and you know being held on the subject. So. Um, you can, people can poo poo it all you want to, but that is, that is the best thing to come out of social media right now is you, it is giving a lot of marginalized people their power back. So mm -hmm. I, I have for that, I'm all for it, all for it. Yeah. Well, and I, I really like that it's becoming more understood. You know, there's a lot of things that if you say like specific terms or words or say that you practice, you're a pagan or you practice witchcraft or whatever. Um, a lot of the time it was, it, it was, people would have like this reaction or they'd be like, oh, you know, and now that it's, it's more of a comfortable term because they hear it so often or they see it so often and there's more of an yeah. understanding despite if they practice or not, there's less of that like fear and that like wall that goes up when you say like, this is a part of my life and people are more accepting about it just because it's, it is more popular. And that's something that I've definitely enjoyed out of it because like now I feel less afraid to tell people things you know or like be open about it it's less scary to do that nowadays yeah. because it's become out. I, I think the people who I think the people who get upset about it are really honestly just on their high horses it's we were all interested in something at some point and we were all gung-ho for it and now we're no longer interested in it the people who are interested in it now, and maybe they won't be in 10 years, so what? They, they, they won't practice it anymore. What do you think, they're gonna be like fake witches for the next 20 years of their life? No, they're gonna lose interest. They're gonna not mess with it anymore. I loved Barbies when I was little. I'm sure there was some collector going, she doesn't know anything about Barbies. You know, yeah. and that's not, that's not fair to do to a younger person. Younger people are just finding this, they're experimenting. Let them experiment and find their spirituality. You know, there's if if they're not into it, then they'll leave it to the wayside and the reigning, you know, grand poobahs will still be there and they'll be able to say, I told you so. Well, great, good for you. I hope that makes you feel better. You know, what right. do you expect from young people? Come on, let them do their thing. Yeah. And well, I mean, even going off of that, it's kind of like there's this there's this deep-rooted fear in a lot of more advanced witches uh, or practitioners that like, oh, they're all making mistakes. They don't know anything about this or that. And it's like, okay, did you? Like oh, what? the amount of mistakes, the amount of like self fuck ups that I've made, the things that I have had to clean up because of my own mistakes. <laughs> but it's like, I learned through that and now I know how to clean that mess up, you know? And it's yeah. just like, if you like in my book, if you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. And yeah. that's, that's just how it goes. And you know, like you can't, you can't uh, make them do anything or make them think anything or you can't protect them. You can only prepare them. So just like give their, your best information and if they decide to take that, then that's what they do. But I think it's kind of crazy that, you know, I get DMs a lot of like, oh, what do you think of, you know, the, the beginners doing this and doing that? And I'm just like, let them do it. If that's yeah. what makes them feel good, like it doesn't bother me. And if that's, yeah. if that ends up messing with their life like that's not on me that's on them you know and yeah. they'll learn I, through that i agree with you 100 percent. i i really think that that is uh like i said i really just think that is just comes from a place of just like condescension like like you never screwed anything up in your life or never did anything stupid you know get out of here yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, there's definitely points that I'm like, oh, that's dangerous. Please don't do that. But it's, you know, yeah. if you're going to, if you're doing something that doesn't have effect or that has like whatever, like, that's fine. They'll figure it out. There's so many things yeah. that, you know, you just learn. And um, I've definitely been in that position where I've kind of been like, what are you doing? Like, don't do this. But at the end of the day, like, I was in that position and like I need to basically remember to humble myself a lot of the time of like I was in that position you know five years ago six years ago not that long ago just like where I was and I would have been doing the same thing if I 
didn't have the experience that I have now. So there's just a lot of things that I'm like, at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me. So right. whatever. <laughs> Fine. I, I, I totally agree. It's totally agree. It's just a skill set. Um, okay. So thank you so much for talking with me. This is going to be the end of the, the public YouTube channel. So I'm going to let you say goodbye to everybody and then we'll move over onto the Patreon questions and have you answer the questions for them. Okay, sure. All right. Thanks everyone for joining. Appreciate it. Thank you. So that was my interview with Mama Sarah, creator of Conjured Cardia. Of course, her links are down below if you want to say hi to her on any of the social medias and or just check out her wonderful shop. Like I said, oils, candles, and she even has little kits for manifestation for specific items. All of them are wonderful. There are these skull candles she makes. They're like skull candles, but they're, you can open them and load them. I'll put a photo right here. They're just so good. <laughs> so that's all for today. And as always, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. Best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.